The first reading from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. The word of the Lord. According to Matthew, the 11th chapter, Jesus is speaking to the crowds. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Welcome to Rally Sunday, although I think it's more of a rally week. When church comes back together after the summer, people who go up north for the weekends or the entire summer begin returning. Welcome back, Bob and Becky and Deb and others. Welcome back to the choir here at 8.30 in the morning. So glad to have your voices help lead us in worship. And we kicked off Wednesday Night Live actually before Rally Sunday so we could prepare for our Bible milestone where there are opportunities for all ages. So I invite you to join us on Wednesday evenings. Now this is Rally Day, and it made me think of when I attended the University of Minnesota in the Twin Cities. I had student season hockey tickets. During the game, if a player commits a penalty, the player goes into the penalty box. And the team has one less player on the ice. It's called a power play. After time is served in the infra- for the infraction, a player is re- released from the penalty box. And the announcer calls out, Minnesota is full strength. And all the crowd responds, those who know it, always were. <clears throat> I'm happy to say that we stay pretty strong as a church throughout the summer. We continue to have our children's church all year long. That was actually um, directed to me when I was at another congregation. It was Spirit Garage. We were trying to reach people who didn't go to church, and there was this single mom who had a couple of kids. And when she brought the kids, they went to children's church, just like we do here, and um, enjoyed their morning together. And when summer came around, we had our education meeting to talk about what we're going to be doing this summer. And one of the members who grew up in a church and thought it would be cool to be part of Spirit Garage said, well, we don't do Sunday school in the summer. And then this single mom who was new to church said, why why? is the church closed? Uh, no, we just have worship. We don't have the kids come to, come to Sunday school. But that's what my child loves to do. That's church for them. And so from that point on, we made sure that there was church for children all summer long, just like there is church for, kid, uh, for all of the adults all summer long. And slowly they blend together as they grow in years. And we were really at full strength last Sunday. For God's work, our hands, thank you to all who participated in the service inside and outside of the building. Blessing bags were put together for Oasis for homeless youth. Blankets were tied to share the warmth with others. Curious people checked out our new sewing room. Scarves, mittens, hats, and prayer shawls were on display for the knitting ministry. And then there were Those who got down on their hands and knees, uh, hearty souls beautifying our property. They accomplished much between door E 
and to the playground. Special kudos to those who stayed until 2 p.m. working outside. As one member said, we blew our entire volunteer overtime budget. <laughs> Susan Sartell made the library team proud, organizing new books in the new locations. Our church library is now the entire hallway back behind our sanctuary. Along with, if you continue outdoor D, you'll find our new free little library at, the, at where the sidewalk ends. And so I invite you to, to join a part of that. It is the take a book, share a book um, process. And so continue to grow in your learning. And then on that note, we shared Bibles. Three before the reading, 20 in total will be given out this week, including an adult receiving one. Uh, the two children who will be baptized at our 10 a.m. service will receive their first Bible, which is a card stock, a cardboard Bible, or I don't remember how to say that. And um, in total, as you heard Emily say, six will be shared as they grow in years. I was one of those... Um, Kids who got that black Bible, do you remember those? The black kind of fake leather Bible in fourth grade? And it was like, okay. And when I worked at another church, Bethlehem, they gave out to the fourth graders the Oxford Annotated Edition. That just got them really excited to read. So as they grow in years, you give them the age-appropriate developmental Bible. And that is what we do here. And all this makes for a fun and eventful rally day. Yes, rally day in decades past had more pageantry, even including parades. I understand you did a, a 5K run at one time. Well, we still had our parade. We simply did it outside with Heritage Days. And we uh, went through the streets passing out 2,500 fruit snacks. Uh, the fruit of the spirit was alive and well, and we shared it with the adults as also telling them that no matter your age, you're a child of God, and they'd smile and they'd take one and enjoy. And that was made possible with the labeling of those 2,500 um, fruit snacks at our God's Work, Our Hands project. I just love what church is all about. It's so unique. Where else do people gather of all ages to share their lives with one another, learning about and praising God so we can go out into the world refreshed and renewed to be Jesus' hands, feet, and voice, sharing a glimpse of heaven on earth? We gather, we gain, and we give. That is what our two readings speak to. From Pro Proverbs, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It will be a healing for your flesh and refreshment for your body. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. If trust in God is to be true, it must be complete. To put half our trust in God and half our trust in ourself or something else is really failure to trust the Lord at all. We are called to give God our full trust, living every moment, not just an hour on Sundays, in praising God and giving thanks. From Matthew, we hear Jesus say to the crowds, and we do so not out of obligation, but this invitation, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Proverbs is the book of wisdom in the Bible. Jesus is the personified divine wisdom. Matthew affirms that those who recognize Jesus as the divine messenger do so not on the basis of superior religious status or individual intelligence, but as a gift from God to those who are open and unpretentious. This contrasts the leadership of the religious leaders of the day who rejected Jesus and his followers. The religious leaders looked down on others who did not think and act in manners that they thought were appropriate. Yoke was a common metaphor for servitude and hence obedience. The religious leaders of the day demanded the law and their positions to be blindly followed. For Jesus, his yoke is easy. A deliverance from the artificial burdens of human religion imposed by religious leaders which actually become a barrier to communion with God. 
Jesus offers this invitation to the crowds. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest is not mere ease, but it is more accurately translated as salvation, associated with kingdom, the kingdom of God and eternal life. Jesus' invitation and the words from Proverbs encourage us to acknowledge God, and God will make straight your paths. That's our anniversary theme verse. God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Jesus is the light of the world, shines back on that path. And we, in following, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You shine your light as you love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength, and you love your neighbor as you love yourself. That is what, as a church, we offer. I invite you to walk through our 2023 ministry handbook. And as I say that, I realized I walked up here without one. If somebody has one that they can run up to me. Thank you, Adam. On the front cover is the Great Commandment, again. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And inside, we connect our core values to the great commandment. In the month ahead, we invite you to live that out. Last week, it was love the Lord with all of your heart in service. And over 40 people signed up for ministries that were on the tables outside or in Fellowship Hall. And I know there's so many more who didn't sign up but we did get a few new names, which was wonderful. And then this week is to love the Lord your God in worship. I'll close with that. And next week is love your neighbor as yourself through evangelism. And next is followed by the love the Lord with all your soul in community. You've heard the phrase, we're soulmates. Well, as a family, we share our souls together. And love the Lord with all your strength in stewardship. And love the Lord with all your mind in discipleship. We took the liberty of switching things around um, during our messages to make it fit our flow better. But those are our core values. Simply what every Christian should do. Or simply what every church should do. You are invited to identify one ministry in each one of the core values that you will live out in the year ahead. Some of you do many, some of you do few, all of you can do some. Remember this as I continue. A compliment for one is not a criticism for another, and at the risk of doing so, I identify one who is among us, who lives out our core values on a regular basis. Nancy Erickson, who's sitting in our choir right now. She's often behind the soundboard. In worship, she's also in service. She helps us on Wednesday nights with the Sandwich Man. In worship, as the Worship and Music Council representative, she's in choir in the sound tech. In evangelism, she comes for trunk or treat. In community, through the wedding ministry, welcoming those uh, who are joining their lives together in stewardship, sharing her offering in discipleship with Vacation Bible School, Children's Church, and the Wednesday night preschool and parent, and parent leader section. Thank you, Nancy. Simply what every Christian could, should do. And we are so glad that you are an example for all of us to continue to live out our faith, not just an hour on Sunday mornings. And so today, we have sign-ups for all things worship. They're out on the table, which include Altar Guild, Acolyte, Bells of Praise, Camera Tech, Cantor, Children and Youth Choir, if those students sign up, Communion Server, Festival Choir, Greeter, Jubilee Praise Team, Lector Ministry, Livestream Worship Host, Special Music, St. Luke's Choir, Sound Tech Techs, Ushers, Video Operators, Welcome desk, worship assistants. That's just in worship, and those opportunities are available outside online. And we can add to that our special worships, our campfire worship, our Christmas worship, and Easter worship. I put those in evangelism, because sometimes that's when people come 
to church and for us to welcome them fully, not to say, well, where have you been? But welcome home. Along with our Veterans Day, and then that's, worship is supported through our dishwashing team as our communion cups will all be cleaned following worship. Uh, our Sunday coffee host and Sunday treat providers, our, the attendance entry, our bulletin production, our tellers. Uh, we have a nursery, activity bags, children's church, playground leaders, children and youth choir. Somebody said, really? Over 100 people help with St. Luke's worship? That's 38 opportunities right there. And with the number of people we have inquired, you know, that puts us over 50. And all the people that rotate those things, over 100 people help live out a life of worship. Love the Lord your God. So this year, our stewardship theme is stewardship is heart work. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart which is made known in how we serve, worship, share the good news, live in community, grow in our faith. All of these things are ways to share our tithes and offerings, not just money, but our very lives. Your pledge card will include a place for each core value. Look through the ministry catalog and consider, how will you live in a life of faith in the year ahead? Let me end with one of my favorite quotes from Minister Edward Everett Hale. I am only one, but, I am, but still I'm one. I cannot do everything, but I can still do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. May our hearts learn to beat as one, so all will come to know the acceptance, forgiveness, and love of God in Jesus' name. Amen.